Hi everyone, I've had a lot of requests on how to do night vision images. Now using Photoshop CS3 this has become pretty simple to do. So we can take an image like this and very quickly turn it into this. It's quite a convincing effect. Now for those of you who are aficionados of night vision you'll know there's varying degrees of quality from the domestic video camcorder all the way up to military grade quality but I'm just going to focus on the fairly low quality version. The high quality version is just a simple matter of applying either a, a colour filter or simply applying a colour tint layer over the top of your existing images but we might have a look at that another day in another tutorial. This is to produce the convincing cheapo quality blown out look night vision. Okay to do this we need to go to our layer palette and we're going to open up a new adjustment layer. This particular adjustment layer is a black and white adjustment layer. So I'll say okay to that. Brings up the black and white dialog box. Now what we need to do here is we can choose from a preset in the drop down box at the top for the particular type of black and white image we want. We're looking for something that's either a high contrast red filter or a plain red filter. Either one is fine, just evaluate the effect yourself on the big difference between the two. There may be no discernible difference, so I'll just stick with the red filter. Why do I want the red filter? Well, look at the skin. It gets that blown out ghostly quality that we associate with the El Cheapo night vision from video cameras. So that's really a good effect if you're making a night vision image of a person's face. Next thing is the colour. We click on the tint box down here and we choose the appropriate colour which is a green that is leaning towards the side of blue. And then we adjust the saturation according to taste. It can be a little bit more desaturated, somewhere between 15 and 20% should be great to make this look quite convincing. Just a bit of trivia, if you're wondering why night vision images tend to be green, it has to do with the way the human eye works. Apparently the human eye can detect the most number of differences in shades and tone in the green range of the spectrum, so therefore the night vision images are easier to see if they're a shade of green. We'll say OK. And we're almost finished. What we need to do now is to take a copy of this and add in some noise or some grain because night vision images are processed and they tend to have a little bit of static on their surface. So we're going to add some noise to this. So first we need to make a stamped merged version. If you're using a PC, you're going to go Control, Shift, Alt and then press E. And that will then give you a copy. If you're using a map, you're going to be going Command, Option, Shift E to produce that stamped merged image. If that's all too much for you, just make sure you use edit and create a copy merged. You'll have to select everything first with select all and then use edit, copy merged and then paste. OK, so we've got our copied version. We now need to add the noise. This is a filter that we're going to be applying here. So we go to the filter menu and your first instinct might be to go for the noise menu and add noise and you can do that if the image is relatively low resolution but I find it works better if you use texture grain you get a lot more choice here with the grain menu so texture grain okay now I'll just uh, reposition and zoom out a little bit here so we can see the effect as it's happening now there's different types of grain that we can apply to this. Now the ones that I reckon work best for relatively high resolution images are the grain type which is called enlarged. That's generally a, a nice quality sort of grain. You can also try clumped, but in this case it's going to look awful. Oh, important tip, I forgot to mention this, I'll just click on cancel. In your work palette I'll just pop this out so you can see it. Make sure you've got this set to your default setting of black and white. If you don't have this set to black and white, you can experience some pretty strange effects when you try and use some of these grain filters. So I'll just bring filter texture grain back again. Now that we're aware of that little booby trap. And I'll stick to the ones that I reckon are best. Enlarged, not bad. Contrasty can work as well, 
that's also not too bad if you want to get it a slightly rougher quality. And if you're going for those television-like effects, you might consider trying the horizontal effect. You might need to actually apply this effect and then dial down the opacity so it's not quite so extreme. But you fiddle around with the intensity sliders to control how much of the effect gets applied. Okay, so now that we know about the grain, I'm going to go for enlarged grain. Uh, contrast is set reasonably low, somewhere between 10 and 15. In this particular image should be good. The intensity, if you really punch it up, it's going to just be too much. Generally, it'll be way over the top. So you want to keep it down a little bit on the low side, probably somewhere around about 50%. And that should do fine. I'll say OK. And final touches. If you find that the effect, when you're looking at it like this, that maybe it's a bit too much, well, a couple of things you can do. One is it tends to get a little bit of a colour smear over some of the pixels. Change the blending mode of your layer from normal to luminosity, and that'll wipe away any weird little colour effects. So now it's just a plain static grain. The other thing you can do is then play with the opacity. If you dial the opacity down to zero and then gradually dial it in, you can then choose exactly just how much of that noisy grain effect you get. So you've got a little bit of control over how it's going to look. And I'm just going to leave this at a setting of around about 80%. If you're watching this on YouTube, the grain effect may be very difficult to see, so I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can get some idea. But uh, again, if you're watching this using the nice high-quality QuickTime versions at the Tutorial Bucket site, you can see this quite clearly. Uh, the image that I've used for this does have an effect on the quality of the result. I have used a pretty bad quality flash picture. The reason why? It imitates what happens with night vision or with the low quality night vision. You get reflection off the face and even better you've got some red eye going on here which gives you that spooky reflection effect that you tend to get with night vision as well. If you're going to recreate this from scratch you might need to create your own red eye effects and that will involve you going into the channels, particularly the red channel, and adding in some grey where the pupil of the eye is. But there you go. That's a pretty simple way to get yourself a good quality night vision effect.